Aladdin Storage Lift recommends carefully following the installation guide for the ASL 500. Installation should be performed by a licensed electrician. Familiarize yourself with the warnings and safety precautions. Take one step at a time and check off each step when completed. Step 1. Determine where the lift should be installed. An area that is at least 93 inches by 73 inches is needed. Keep in mind the distance from the attic floor to the roof will determine how high you can stack your storage items on the storage lift cart. Also, have an electrician or plumber reroute any wires or plumbing from lift location. Have a licensed framer create the opening in your attic floor. The exact inside measurements should be 82 inches long and 46 and a half inches wide. Make sure the opening is perfectly square. Trim out the opening with your choice of molding. Install the molding flush with the edge of the sheetrock so that it does not interfere with the lift's operation. Carry or hoist the motor drive assembly into the attic and place the feet directly on top of the joists. Do not mount to the top of the attic flooring. Use some quick clamps to hold in place. Install the drive shaft pole and the motor drive assembly. Secure the drive shaft pole with the supplied bolt and lock nut. Carry or hoist the bearing plate assembly into the attic. Install the drive shaft pole in the bearing plate. Place the bearing plate assembly feet directly on top of the joists and use quick clamps to temporarily secure. The motor drive assembly and the bearing plate assembly must be square to the joists. The center to center measurement of the top rails must equal 74 and 3 quarter inches. Confirm the storage lift is centered in the opening and reconfirm the top rails are 74 and 3 quarter inches from center to center. Once confirmed, use the feet flange holes to drill for the fasteners. Use the supplied nuts, bolts, and washers to secure two holes from each foot to the joists. Once secured, tighten the two set screws on the bearing. The cart cables come pre-installed on the drive shaft pole. The outer cables feed over the outer pulley wheels and the inner cables feed over the inner pulley wheels and down. Verify that the cables roll off the top of the drive shaft pole and over the top of the pulley wheels. Use a 4mm Allen wrench and a 10mm socket wrench to assemble the cart assembly and ceiling support panel. The necessary hardware is included. Using the supplied hardware, attach the lower cart assembly to the upper cart assembly. Joist or truss size determines which holes to use. See the diagram in step 12 of the installation guide to determine which holes to use. Place the cart assembly on the floor beneath the opening. The inner holes should be on the drive pole side and the outer holes should be farthest from the drive pole and motor. Slide the ends of the cables through the holes and weights. Fasten with the nylon insert lock nuts. Do not over thread. There should only be two threads showing below the lock nuts. Insert the cart cable into the motor shutoff switch bar. Cut and remove the zip tie holding the bar. Mount the safety switch to the drive side frame. There are two pilot holes showing the location. Make sure the cables are feeding over the top of the cable safety switch bar. Install the key switch controller in a single gang box. Mount it in an area that will be visible from the lowered cart assembly. Run the control wire from the motor drive assembly control board to the key switch controller. Mm -hmm. 
install a dedicated 110 volt circuit receptacle to supply power to the motor drive assembly. Receptacle should be within 3 feet of the motor drive assembly service switch box. Plug in the 3 feet pigtail pre-wired to the service switch from the factory. Make sure the cart cables are riding in the pulley grooves. Assure cables are aligned in the helical grooving of the drive shaft. Now it's time to test the storage lift operation. Unplug the low voltage control wire from the control board. Using a jumper wire, jumper between the COM and UP pins. The motor should start to raise the cart cables. Continue to operate until the cart cables pick up the cart assembly off the floor. Stop when cart is just off the floor and there is tension on all four cables. Double check that the cables are in the helical grooving in the drive shaft pole. Jumper again between calm and up. Manually press the motor shutoff switch bar to ensure the automatic shutoff system will work. Jumper between calm and down to test storage lift in the down direction. The cart should begin to lower. The cart can be lowered to the floor, but make sure to never lower the cable weight so far that the cables lose tension. Plug the control wire back on to the control board. Test the storage lift by testing the key switch controller. Wait two seconds between each command. Use the self-tapping screws to install the sheet metal covers and reinstall motor drive cover. Make a ceiling panel out of a quarter inch finished plywood. It should be cut to 83 and a half inches long and 48 inches wide. Assure the ceiling panel support bars are oriented properly. Use the supplied self-tapping screws to attach the panel to the bottom of the ceiling panel support. Follow the step 20 diagram in the installation guide for where to place the screws. Operate the storage lift till the cart is roughly shoulder height. With all six springs facing the same direction, hook the trim panel assembly to the bottom of the cart assembly. Cut a sheet of 3-8 plywood to 68 and a half inches long and 44 inches wide and attach it to the cart assembly. Use the supplied self-tapping screws. Operate the storage lift to the ceiling position it will automatically shut off at the top. Say goodbye to the days of lugging your storage items into the attic. Let your Aladdin storage lift raise up to 500 pounds at a time into your attic by just turning the key. Check out our wireless controller option by visiting aladdinstoragelift.com.